Hi, I got another tip for you today, and this time I want to talk about another concept that I didn't face so far, called lulbas or lulbins, which means living off the land binaries and scripts, or living off the land binaries. And this is a new frontier in penetration testing and hacking in general. The concept behind that is basically using Windows binaries that come with a default Windows installation to compromise a Windows system and go basically undetected. In this video, I'm going to show you a series of examples I actually exploited on a recent pen test I worked on. It was a lot of fun and I had a lot of success with this attack vector because oftentimes incident response and security solutions overlook this kind of stuff. Now the problem with lull bins is that they're not so blatantly malicious because they're executable signed by Microsoft and coming with a default Windows install. The problem isn't with the executable per se, but with its built-in functionalities that can be sometimes used to overcome a Windows system in an intended way. But let's see some examples of that. So here I have a Windows 10 Pro machine as a target system and a Kali machine here. This is an MN user I got here, but I find that the same level of success can be achieved with non anime user unless you use system binaries uh, located in System32 that requires MN access. Well, let's actually see a good example of how to use this type of binaries to exploit Windows. And let's start with analyzing how to use FTP for that. FTP can be used basically in two ways, interactively in the command line or non-interactively loading commands from a text file. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm here creating a payload with MSF Venom with 500 iterations using the VNC viewer.txe binary as a template. And I'm saving it to a file called shell.txe. So now we got our payload and we can transfer it to our target. I started an FTP server on Kali here. And now we're going to run a series of commands to automatically download this file to our victim machine. And you notice that we silently downloaded a malicious executable to our Windows machine. 
the good thing is that defender could quickly detect and remove our castle nowhere but anyway the proof of concept remains I was pretty successful with this one All right, our payload was created and now I'm using CertUtil, another ligand of the lamb binary, one of my favorites, to upload this job executable. It looks like Defender is doing a good job even with this. Another Windows executable that can be used to compromise the system even though it's not installed in this specific version of Windows 10 I installed it manually is Netcat. So now that we have Netcat available, let's open up Listener here. And lo and behold, we got a shell. I'm also an administrator, so this is good. So we can leverage a signed Windows executable even though it's not always installed by default in Windows in this case to obtain a reverse shell. And you notice that Defender didn't do a thing and didn't detect the connection at all. That's because it's signed by Microsoft so doesn't raise any eyebrows. Very cool attack is abusing the sticky keys functionality, which is uh, an accessibility feature provided for impaired users uh, that can be abused to spawn a command prompt in the login screen. Let's make a copy of that first. Let's now enable this functionality. So I had to play around with the settings of the specific file in order to change the security permissions here until I could copy the file the way I want. So now the functionality should work. So I basically changed the executable that runs the sticky key functionality with the command prompt. And there we go. All well, it's barely visible, I don't know why. Now we're talking. And you see that we can run commands as system. So I could basically run an netcat command and get a shell. Another promising type of attack is with alternate data stream that we can use 
in combination with specific LOL bins. And we can see something like that in a minute. Now I can use the XREP32 executable to create an executable inside the text file and run it. Defender didn't detect any suspicious activity in this case. Let's now create a new text file and hide Process Explorer inside of it, along with a uh, non-existent string. Find string uh, allows us to practically run an executable from inside the text file, and even in this case, nothing was detected. We can also create a service that spawns a command prompt. We were successful in creating a new service. Now, the error message says that the service isn't installed, but if we check services.msc, we will find it. No detection whatsoever in this case as well. So, LOL bins are a very promising frontier for penetration testing. That's all.